Um, hi, everyone. So it's really good to see you guys here today. I'm Sam, a solutions engineer based at HashiCorp. And today we're going to walk through a piece of functionality within Vault that is actually not super well known or not used quite significantly. Uh, but keep in mind, this is an enterprise plus uh, feature. Um, but that's okay because if you are throughout this demo uh, later on, I actually have it deployed on HP Vault. So I will showcase, I'll paste a link to my GitHub repo. It's public. You can run it, test it out yourselves. We'll give you $50 free credit to play with uh, HP Vault itself. So there's plenty of opportunities for you to just test out this feature. But anyway, let's dive in. All right. So for those who don't know, just a bit of a level set with what Vault is. Um, so Vault is the secrets management, secrets lifecycle management tool that we have at HashiCorp. And the idea behind Vault is that you have an identity-based security approach to accessing secrets that's being managed inside HashiCorp Vault. Now, HashiCorp Vault itself can manage a few different areas of secrets management. So we're talking about secrets itself. We have static secrets, dynamic secrets, database, Kubernetes, et cetera. But you might also want to have use cases around the likes of certificates, encryption keys. Maybe you want to look, look at what encryption as a service will be like as well. Those are capabilities that Vault provides. So it's quite an all-in-one solution. A very nice Swiss army knife uh, for your secrets management capabilities. With that said, now the ways to secure Vault, there's a few different approaches to it, right? Um, oh, and keep in mind, if you are raising your hands or asking questions, I probably won't see it until the end. So feel free to just type in the q and I'll definitely get to it at the end of the session or through an email following up as well. But anyway, back to, back to the slides. All right, so there's a few different ways that you can secure Vault. The one that we talked about before, right, is identities. Identity securities, identities, of course, is going to be one way that we can approach it. And the way identities works within Vault is that you can tie in different authentication mechanism to a single entity. Uh, and with that single entity, we can then approach or access our Vault. And we can have different authentication methods built to tie into that single representation of, of who the users or who the machines are. Once we can uh, access Vault through the authentication methods or the, through the different identities, we have policies that we can then attach to that access itself. So what we do with policies in Vault is that we can grant, we can forbid access to different certain pathways or certain operations within Vault. And finally, if we want to be able to operate in an organization that might have different business units, we don't want to give every business unit access <clears throat> to Vault because we might want to actually separate different business functions with their own secrets itself. So we can actually implement the likes of namespaces and what namespaces allows us to to do is create isolated environments within Vault to make it such like a multi-tenanted uh, Vault solution. Now, with that said, though, it doesn't really answer the big question, which is what happens when you have really, really sensitive secrets? Now, some examples of what those sensitive secrets are, you might have cloud root keys. Those are not able to be dynamic, for example. They're static keys. You want to make sure they're secured. You might have database access to PI data. You don't just want to give that out to anyone. You, uh, and then you might also have other admin sort of credentials for org wide systems. Now, these are basically tools that gives you keys to the kingdom, or if it's leaked, you'll be, your organization will be front page in some news article with potentially a fine that follows up with it as well. So how do we actually try to find ways to secure those sensitive secrets? Now, the most basic or the most straightforward approach really is the authorization workflows. Now, authorization workflows, as you see in this little diagram on the right, it's a very linear process. Essentially, what happens in authorization workflow is a user needs to access some sort of secret or some sort of encryption key. So what they will need to do is that before they can even access those secrets, there is an additional layer of governance on top of it that basically is only granting access to those users when someone has appropriate, when someone with the appropriate authority has a, have provided their approval process. So they have confirmed and said that, yep, Sam is uh, allowed to access this cloud root credentials. I approve of it. Once the approval process comes through, I can actually retrieve those keys and then use it for my day-to-day -day operations. Now, that logic itself, extremely straightforward. It's not really that complex. Where the challenge comes in with an authorization workflow is that when you want to implement it inside your organization, it becomes a little bit more difficult because you have different environments 
that you need to have this approval process for. You might know, you might want to spend it across different application. Maybe you even have a multi-cloud approach. So you have multiple different cloud infrastructure or infrastructures that need some sort of authorization process. So this implementation of these authorization workflows becomes very convoluted, very complicated. And the implementation timeline now goes from that one week where you think it's super quick to a year where you have to figure out how to work with different target systems. And so what the solution that comes with Vault itself is that we have something called control groups. Now control groups by itself, very simple solution, right? It's an external authorization that allows you to go through an approval process for any specific operations or actions within your Vault environment. So if you're using HashiCorp Vault and you want to provide approval processes for different secrets or keys within your Vault, this approval workflow already exists within the Vault uh, solution itself. And what we can do with control groups is that we can trigger external authorization on nearly any action in Vault. We can also control granularly control which identity groups can authorize that particular transaction that's happening. And if you're an organization that needs to work with certain regulatory requirements, you can now start being able to have that compliance capability in place by introducing this external controllers concept with control groups. So with that in mind, we're going to actually walk through what the authorization workflow will look like when we use Vault's control group. In this example today, on this demo today, I'll have Adam. Adam will be, of course, authenticating the Vault using his, in this case, username and password as his identity. He will want to request uh, access to a particular secrets pathway, but he's actually going to hit a blocker. This blocker basically says that, hey, Adam, you're going to need this additional authorization before you can retrieve the secret. So what happens? Well, now Anna, his manager, would then need to authenticate into Vault using her identity. She's, she takes the accessor ID provided to Adam to identify which authorization workflow Adam wants to get access to. <clears throat> She approves the authorization workflow. Once the approval comes through, the secret path is now unlocked. Adam has access to his secrets and voila, he can actually continue with his operations of the rest of his day-to-day -day activities or uh, different things that he needs to do. So let's actually see this in action. I'm gonna quickly share the rest of my screen because I'll probably need to show everything. So just for a bit of context, this is the GitHub repo. FYI, it's still in progress. I need to put in a bit more of a get me, uh, uh, sorry, a read me just to walk through how you can set it up. But the code is there, it's all functional. I'm using Terraform Cloud to set up my environment. But what we're going to go through is that uh, we will deploy a HashCorp Vault, a HTTP Vault cluster. Within that cluster, I have some configuration code that configures my Vault environment to run this particular demo. So if any questions on that, uh, let me know. But what, what, what you need to keep in mind is that within the policies that I'm creating within Vault, I have a few different pathways. And in the pathway, I have a control group um, block of code that tells me which uh, groups, identity groups will be giving the approval process and how many approvals is needed to access a particular secret inside that pathway. So you can run it and deploy it on your own and try it out. I have that pasted in the Zoom chat. But let's see it in action. So this is my HTTP Vault. I'm using the UI in this case, but of course, if you're using Vault, you can use the CI or the API as well. In the username, I'm going to log in as Adam. Now, Adam, with his policy, has access to his cubbyhole, but also the database and his AWS root keys. Going to the AWS root keys, we can see that Adam has three different environments, but he can only access really the prod environment. Once he goes into the prod environment, you'll see that, hey, this control group's uh, notification pops up. He needs to go through an approval process now. So what's he going to do? He can actually copy this assessor ID. And now when I swap over to a separate page, I'm going to log in now as Anna. <clears throat> With Anna, I'll go into my access control group, and I'll paste the accessor ID that Adam has provided to Anna. And we can look up which workflow that needs approval. On the authorization process, Adam is now authorized to access this endpoint. We can track that Anna has provided this access to Adam. And when I refresh, when I'm going back to Adam's screen and I refresh my page, we'll see that, hey, we've actually been granted access to this particular path. So when I click visit now, I click my prod environments, I now have access to my username and passwords. 
Now, what's great about the control group's capability as well is that once I access my pathway, it works like a wrap token. So if I want to access a the same secrets once again, I actually won't have the capability to do so. I need to go through the entire process. Yeah, so um, with that in mind as well, right? What I also wanted to showcase today is that because every operation within Vault is tracked through its audit logs, we can also see how uh, we can also see who's actually requesting access to a particular path and who's providing the approval process as well. So I'm just gonna run a Docker container. Um, inside this Docker container, it actually deploys a particular script that allows me to download my audit logs from my HP vault environment. And while I was downloading it, uh, I see a question from Jordan in the Zoom chat. Does Adam need to give Anna the access to key manually? In this demonstration, he does it manually, but we have, but because we're actually, um, we actually store the, the process through the audit logs, we can actually retrieve who's requesting access to those particular pathways. Um, but yes, the access to key needs to be provided manually in this case, in this context at least. Now, let's see if this downloads really quickly now. And always when I do a demonstration, something goes wrong. So if we don't have access to this, it's fine. I'll just go through a little bit more details about what we can do with control groups. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, this looks all right. Awesome, cool. So the auto logs comes out. If I just cap this auto log and pipe it through the JQ query, uh, we can see, hey, this is the entire request and response coming out of my HP vault in the last hour. And now in the same script, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna see who has access to the prod environment in the last hour. You can see that, hey, we've got Adam who's trying to go through the read operation to this particular pathways. And if I'm running the approval process, I can see who has been given the approvals, which is Anna giving access to Adam. Now you see a lot of entry points this way is because my script's not perfect. Um, it captures everything. And I've also ran this a few times before as well. So not to worry there. All right, so in terms of demonstration, it's done. It's actually a very straightforward process or a straightforward authorization workflow. This is a capability built into Vault already itself. But there are some additional things you can do with, uh, H with, with Vault and control groups. So my screen, I have my slides. I assume everyone can see the screen, right? Or have I lost it? No. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, Tim. Perfect. So what I can show you now is that in, in control groups, we can have additional identity groups as the authorizers. So what this means is that in this example here, we have one, one uh, factor called tech leads with two different groups, managers or lead, but a separate factor called super users. In this case, we are only being we're only able to access the create and update capability of the secrets path only when two members of the managers or leads group and one member of the super users groups authorizes that request. So if you if you want additional authorization layers, you can do that with control groups. And additionally, if you also want to grant uh, further capabilities through an approval process, you can do that as well using this controlled capabilities line. So what's happening in this line is that whoever has access to a vault token with this policy, they can read whatever secrets is in there. But if they actually want to write a secret to this path, they need to go through an authorization process. Once they have the authorization uh, gives, once you've succeeded with the authorization, they will then unlock the right access to the secret slash full pathway. And we can also specify the number of approvals needed for us to gain access to this capability. And that is the end of my very quick snapshot. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Put a thank you sign. Thank you for listening to my really quick snapshot conversation today.